Okay, the quantum mechanical model explains. So the chemical properties of elements in the periodic table are periodic. They recur every so often because the number of valence electrons is periodic. Elements in the same column have similar properties because they have the same number of valence electrons. The, uh, the valence electrons are occupying the same type of orbitals in each case, and so that's what gives them their similar properties. So if we look at the noble gases, so here is just that piece of the periodic table. Um, we notice that they all have eight valence electrons except for helium. Helium, you know, a little exception there. They all have eight valence electrons. Um, whatever period they are in, it's that number, N, S2, N, P6. They all end the same way. So we observe that atoms with eight valence electrons are unusually stable. That's why the noble gases really don't react. It wasn't until, I think, 1960 that they discovered the first compound with a noble gas in it. Before that, it was believed that they didn't make any compounds at all. When, when that quantum level is full, then the overall energy of the electrons is lower. So in the hotel analogy, that's like, you know, there's some discount that if the, you know, if all the bells and whistles go off, you know, then everybody's got a bonus. We look at the alkali metals. All of the alkali metals have one valence electron. NS1 is their uh, highest level, their valence electron configuration. Um, these guys are really close to having that super stable um, electron configuration. They're off by one. Each of these has one more electron than the noble gas right before it. So I think of the noble gases as being like those cool kids in high school, the ones that everybody wanted to be like, right? I remember dropping my old, oldest son off at school, and it's like, this is like a crowd of kids wearing Hollister hoodie sweatshirts. That was the thing that year, right? And everybody wants to look like the cool kids, even though if, you know, deep down you're not a cool kid. So all of these guys are very reactive because if they lose one electron, if they lose their valence electron, what's left? The noble gas configuration. Does that change them into a noble gas? No, but they look like one on the outside, right? And so all of these alkali metals will form positive one ions, and they'll do so quite easily. The halogens are one column before the noble gases. They all have seven valence electrons. They're quite reactive because if they gain one electron, then they have a noble gas electron configuration. So they need to add an electron to become like a noble gas, and so they form anions with a negative one charge by gaining an electron. Any questions? So electron configuration is uh, tied into the charges that different atoms form, or the ions that they form. Okay, so we've seen that um, there's a lot of metals and most of the nonmetals, they'll only form one ion, the predictable. The group 1A form plus one, group 2A plus two, group 7A is minus one, group 6A is minus two, group 3A, I mean, sorry, group uh, 5A is minus three. The atoms form those ions, as I just kind of explained, because when they do that, their electron configurations are the same as the nearest noble gas. Okay, so here's, a, here's an illustration from your book. And uh, we have a new addition, and they still haven't fixed the mistake on this table. Um, this is not period one. This is period two. So in your textbook, uh, those numbers are wrong. Lithium is in period two. All of these form positive one ions, right? positive two. Because magnesium, how many valence electrons does magnesium have? It's in group 2A. It's got two. Its valence electrons are 3s2. If it loses both of those electrons, then it has the same electron configuration as the noble gas previous. 
Fluorine has seven valence electrons. By gaining one electron, it becomes like the next noble gas. Any questions? So we learned how to predict what the charges were for these by looking at the periodic table. But quantum mechanics explains why they have those predictable charges. So how to write electron configurations for anions. Anions are formed when um, atoms gain electrons. The nonmetals are the ones that form anions. And I had a, um, a YouTube watcher who, who gave me a, another um, way to remember that anions are negative. He says that onions make him cry. You know, you cut the onions and they make you cry, right? Onions make him sad, so anions are negative. Onions, anions. Anions are formed when nonmetal atoms gain enough electrons to get eight valence electrons. So the S and P orbitals of this, that valence shell are full. So if we look at sulfur as an example, sulfur has six valence electrons. Here's its electron configuration. Okay, it ends in 3s2, 3p6. To get eight valence electrons, it has to add two to this 3p sublevel. Then it's got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. So now it has a total of eight, electron, eight valence electrons, two plus six, and that gives it a negative two charge. This electron configuration is exactly the same as argon's. Why is the sulfide ion different than an argon atom? Pardon me? Well, it's a completely different element. It has a charge. Why is it a different element? Protons. protons. Okay. So sulfur has how many protons? 16. How many protons does argon have? 18. So this sulfide ion has 18 electrons, but it still only has 16 protons. You can change how you look on the outside by dressing like the cool kids, but that doesn't change who you are on the inside. The protons are like the personality, the soul of the atom. That's not changing. You can just, but you can change. You can mess around with the electrons. You can put more on. You can take more off. So the cations. Cations are formed when metal atoms lose their valence electrons. And what happens is you lose the valence electrons, and now the valence shell becomes the next lower one. Right? So here's magnesium. We look at this electron configuration for magnesium, and these are the valence electrons right here. So magnesium loses those valence electrons and now has this electron configuration. What are the valence electrons now? There's eight, because it's the highest principal level that has electrons in it. So now these are the valence electrons. It's a little like peeling an onion. You've got this partial skin, partial layer of onion on the outside. You peel that off, what's underneath? A full layer of onion, right? So we're peeling off this partial layer, and underneath is a nice full valence shell. Magnesium has a plus two charge because it didn't change the protons, but it lost two electrons. Same electron configuration as neon. Any questions? This is one of my favorites. <laughs>